So a little bit about me. Um, been a hacker for a while, in case you didn't know. Um, one of the tools that I've written recently, um, it actually started way back in DEF CON 22 as the uh, process detection mechanism for detecting processes in physical memory by page table detection. And uh, there's a lot of reserved bits that you needed and because of you know, characteristics about how the page table is organized, in particular the self pointer, um, I could detect all these processes. And uh, you know, then we were pointing up at the screen and you were like, oh, because there's a VM running and it could even detect the processes in the VM, you know, in the, in the, you know, nested wise. And um, that gave me the idea to kind of keep developing the, the tool and or the, you know, the tool set. And here we are a few years later with um, something I think is pretty cool. Um, the, you'll see it at the end hopefully, but um, it's all on GitHub right now. Um, it does a full integrity checking of code pages in memory and you just golden image your VM and then you can check it anytime you want. So that's going to be like uh, hopefully we get to see a little demo. Um, overall the, um, the outline of what we're going to talk about today is um, how to forensic, how to fuck forensics, um, how to unfuck it. Um, I don't know how much uh, any of you guys have done uh, forensics, but it can be a very frustrating uh, proposition. There's a lot of uh, tactics used by adversaries to um, misdirect you, to uh, cause you to do extra work, and uh, cost the people a lot of money and time. So overall, um, there's been a lot of techniques over the years. I've got a couple slides on um, like a uh, um, breakout of different things that I, I borrowed from uh, another presentation. Um, but uh, last year uh, in 80 did this uh, AF presentation like as fuck but it means anti-forensics. And um, uh, he did this uh, interesting um, mechanism to break certain tools. And then uh, the ROP stuff is going to be how uh, forensics kind of meets reverse engineering and kind of meets uh, like low level analysis and how, you know, these different uh, domains are kind of overlapping a bit and you've got to really uh, have an understanding at least of these things and maybe want to look out for them. Um, and I got some references to some other cool tools one of the guys from Cisco Talus did recently. Um, pretty awesome. Um, and then, uh, uh, Cloud Leech is um, a rip I did on um, uh, Ulrich, Ulfrisk's uh, DMA uh, PCI Leech stuff. Um, and uh, I was going to have a demo of like uh, unlocking a cloud container. Um, but trust me, it all works great. It all works great. <laughs> Just imagine it. Wave my hands around. So um, the forensic process in general kind of uh, starts out um, in the most basic form of trying to understand the timeline of events that happened and trying to reconstruct an understanding and some comprehension of like what happened, what's the capability of this guy, what, what can he do, how much do I have to like backpedal or you know how, how hard do I have to come, do I have to like redeploy my you know domain controllers or can I just format some backups you know or, or, or un, you know unroll some tapes and uh, we're good. So, um, hold on. And these artifacts often come from um, disk or, you know, log event sources. And, you know, the better you are at providing high quality uh, sources, um, you know, at the front end and like have your infrastructure being monitored properly um, in different ways, uh, you'll have a lot better luck in the back end because, um, you know, it's easy to tamper with one machine, but it's hard to, you know, go after and compromise the logging that's going on in multiple systems and to try and, uh, you know, if the attacker's got to now subvert uh, remoting events and things like that, it makes his job a lot harder. Uh, so this one is um, talking about some different uh, tools you can use and different ways you can go about it. Um, Mark Rusinovich uh, did this Sysmon stuff which really enhances the uh, Windows event utils but I don't know how many of you guys have um, or people have used uh, WEVT util. Uh, you know, I used to, I grew up in, in Windows and back in the day it used to be just be like event log and it was like system app programs like there would be like four of them. Um, there's like almost 1200 of them 
that you can configure and this will log everything from like binaries being executed to like really the minutia of like your VPN connections, like what packets got dropped, firewalls, all kinds of stuff. And this is um, an amazing um, set of uh, logs that can really boost um, your understanding and your comprehension of events and, and you can tie it, tie it together easier and it's a lot more difficult to mask your activity um, when you've got to kind of compromise all these different logs. Um, Swift on security, security um, has a GitHub repo that um, has a bunch of uh, Sysmon configs which will help make um, running Sysmon a lot easier uh, and, and more concise as it were. Uh, and also if you're in the Linux space, I don't want to be totally Windows focused here, but in the Linux space, um, uh, go ahead and take a look at um, OS Query from uh, GitHub. So handling memory, uh, you know, has gotten uh, pretty uh, uh, intense over the years and uh, there's a lot of different tools here as well. Um, essentially you want to reconstruct like what's actually running and develop an understanding of like what was running from the artifacts in memory. Um, you know and this is a, this is where we start to get into the reverse engineering kind of component of it. Uh, Steven Ridley has this really cool tool for like sandbox memory hacking. Um, you should totally check that out. Um, and always the uh, game hacking space you know if you really want to uh, go farther and understand uh, the limits of what people are doing um, it's a good way to go. Um, so hiding really well, misdirecting and uh, or like exploiting people. Um, Alex Stamos actually uh, way back in DEF CON 15 did this talk with a couple other guys uh, on uh, breaking forensic software and they had like NTFS hacks, um, they had like uh, NK exploits and stuff like this so that stuff still goes on. Um, and that's kind of in the vein of what um, dual core like N80 guy did um, uh, last year um, in trying to like attack the tool. This is the um, overall kind of um, anti forensics uh, taxonomy um, and it kind of breaks out like all these different techniques that these guys um, came up with and they tried to expand on. This is like some academic guys that you can check the reference out and uh, they're trying to get more into this space and uh, publish papers in that area. Um, uh, sorry I didn't make the slides for the CD or anything. I'm going to upload them to GitHub in the, in my repro if you guys want to check and I'm also going to pass them to the media people after. Um, some foreshadowing is like if you can normalize your tactics as an attacker into like what's expected of the network then um, you know it's a lot harder to be seen if you're like assumed to be like a regular guy. Like I'm a VPN user, what, you know? And um, you know so if the attacker gets in and just can reconfigures your system and just uses what's there, you know. Um, so the counter to in 80s uh, anti forensics, the counter counter to this is um, more or less there's always additional sources just like logs in memory there's always going to be additional sources to take advantage of and in particular for his um, my tool in Vitero um, works out of the box it, it, because I base all of the dumping on page tables and that's um, something defined by the ABI and the hardware and you can't really mess that up so to speak in, in the same way. Um, I, I believe volatility and recall have an option for uh, using DADS to discriminate the pages for your executables and make it easier to dump them as well. So um, with a little digging you can always find a way to kind of get around this stuff. So the ROP, I know I gotta make this really quick, sorry I burnt up so much time uh, with the monitor. Um, anyhow, the monitors, uh, I mean the ROP, <laughs> the ROPs um, are, um, uh, you know, becoming, they're an attack exploitation uh, technique, but now it's being seen that they're actually becoming a persistence method. So gargoyle was like the public example of like how to, how to interact with a ROP and make a persistence um, uh, threat out of it as opposed to just like an exploit. And it sort of waits on a timer and then evaluates the stack a little bit and sets up a window to jump in and out of kind of like as a, as a, you know, a little splash jump and he'll jump into one page on a timer on and off. Anyhow, the way this ROP works, um, it actually gets um, a little bit easy to detect because it's not exactly perfect either. Um, uh, so let me just jump right to the tools because I know I'm running so short. Uh, ROP EMU is this really cool tool that um, actually will evaluate a ROP chain. And if you want to do some like analysis of like what is this ROP doing because it's really hard to, if you've got a ROP in the stack, like understanding what all the little micro gadgets are, what gadgets are um, what you return into that do, does a little operation so that you can, um, you know, 
construct shell code or you can execute something. And you have to chain these together. So anyhow, ROP EMU will take these uh, ops and actually emit an ELF binary that you can just throw into IDA, which is pretty dope. Um, uh, also, um, so in Vitero, my tool as well has a ROP detection built into it um, for forensics. So you can, in the tool, know if gargoyle or something like gargoyle is running. Um, lots of different injection techniques over the years. A lot of these are kind of uh, variations on a theme. Um, you know, more or less uh, loading a binary up and then like using part of the address space to inject your own code so that you're hiding again. Always these attackers are going to want to hide in something that's in the, you know, hiding in the trees or in the, the grass or whatever else. Um, so another one. <laughs> Sorry to keep going like this. This is um so in in a sense the PCI leech is kind of like a code cave attack because it's an inline patch, and inline patches are really really hard to detect because they're not modifying something that normal hookers do, which is like an import table or an entry point or a prolog or something like this. It's actually just like right in the byte stream of the binary. So unless you're actually reverse engineering or dumping like the whole address space of the OS to the and 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 manually going through and uh, auditing it or, or something like that, uh, you're gonna have a real hard time understanding if you've been comprehensive and if you understand everything that you're looking at in terms of a memory dump. So um, uh, that's where kind of integrity validation comes in and this is the feature that I uh, released um, just a couple weeks ago. And um, it does es essentially uh, 64 byte piecewise hashing over a binary. So you're all the text segments of all the binaries that you whitelist or golden image get converted into this database that then you can go and test your machines and go, hey, is this thing what I think it is? And a lot of people did uh, pages for uh, hashing, but you know, I don't even want to disassemble four kilobytes. Like a page is 4K. That's a lot of assembly instructions. So I support like a configurable size that you specify. You're like, you know, I don't want to spend any time at all disassembling. So you could just say 64 bytes. And then if it detects like a patch in these bytes, um, it goes right to the byte that is patched and or right near it. You know, there's only going to be three or four instructions there. Um, tie it all together. Uh, you know, always use complementary sources and uh, build an understanding of like you know the latest techniques and understand that like these things are coming and they do happen. And a lack of visibility into uh, an understanding of these um, methodologies can can leave you with some gaps in your understanding of what you're looking at. And my hope was to show you this tool and it's got a really awesome output where um, you know it'll. Uh, I'll just give it a shot while, we're, while I'm up here. Um, how do I get this thing out of here? Oh, there we go. Um, if I do get a chance to run it, if I get one second. Hold on. Oh, that's the wrong cable. <laughs> no. Oh, well. They don't have it. Nuts. Want, want. Um, sorry. Oh wait, is that it? No. Okay, sorry. Everyone. Any questions? Um, <laughs> I'll go check the tool out. You know, <laughs> full integrity checking, golden image of your VM, and I also have live editing. If anyone's ever used PyDebug, I've got a similar concept where I reflect all of the native kernel, all the symbols I reflect into Iron Python, which is .NET. So you can basically go like eProcess dot image path name equals foo, and it can write back to the memory image that you're looking at. So you can suspend VMware, edit it with this tool, and then resume it, and then you know whatever will happen in the kernel will happen. And the uh, the thing that um, will protect you is normally you've got to set up BCD entries for debugging, but if you're dealing with an advanced adversary, uh, that'll actually tip them off that they're in a you know monitored environment. So when you know when you configure the BCD debug, it changes the kernel and whatnot. So um, that was the the concept behind the passive active memory hacking. Um, you know, give a shot on GitHub and uh, thanks again, everybody. Thanks.